I would like to share some mind training teachings with you, specifically the Bodhisattva Chayadavatana. There are a whole bunch of mindset, mind training teachings. Mind training teachings specifically means to learn, unlearn, relearn with our mind. Unlearn doesn't mean we're bad. It just means we can find a better method. So what I chose was the specific mind trained set of teachings. The mindset traded teachings are very strong in Tibetan Buddhism because our form of Buddhism stresses very much transformation, change. Why? Allison can throw something at me. It bursts, makes, makes me a cup, makes me wet, and I can be very upset. What a horrible, rude, nasty, unpleasant person you are. How dare you make me feel so uncomfortable? Or you can throw it at me and I change my view. I wonder what's disturbing her. I wonder what makes such a lovely lady do something so rude and embarrass herself and make every, make everything so unpleasant. What's, what's inside of her that's making her so unhappy? So how I look at it is how we turn the situation. If we had mind training teachings, and we practice it, we will look at all situations in a second scenario. If we don't have mind training teachings, we might look at certain things in the first scenario, which is anger, anger immediately. Immediately anger. Why? How dare you? What for? What's going on? Are you crazy? Secondly, what happened to you? Are you okay? You're not so concerned about your being wet or something was thrown at you. You're more concerned, what happened to that person? It's the same situation, same wetness, everything the same, but my mind turned it around. And is that possible? It is. Why is it possible? By listening to Dharma teachings, we can understand that and turn our minds around. Because our minds became the way it was over years of training. We weren't born like this. We were born pretty much a, a slate. So it took years for our mind to train this way. We didn't become like this. We were all 15, 18, 21, idealistic, starry-eyed, everything's perfect, everything's fabulous, everything's wonderful. It's over time we become a, <laughs> a little jaded if we have become jaded. It's over time we develop anger and dissatisfaction, regrets. So therefore, if our mind can train to have that kind of attitude, of course, it can train to have another attitude. But some people say to me, Rinpoche, I'm too old. I'm already set in my ways. I'm stuck. So I say to them, that's your projection. You see, according to the Bodhisattva's teachings, Bodhisattva's ideal way of life, as taught by Shantideva in Bodhisattva Chaitavatthana on the body mind or body chitta, it says very clearly, the mind is timeless. When we die, our body is left behind. It is components given to us by the result of our karma. But our mind continues. Whatever we have learned, not learned, or accumulated with our mind, it continues into our next life. So, that one may be a little bit hard to accept in the beginning. In the beginning, maybe a little bit hard to accept. But for someone who understands Dharma and reincarnation, it helps a lot. Let me tell you why. If your mind becomes old, then when you're born as a baby, your ba the baby sh you, should, you should be very old already. Your mind cannot learn. Because you didn't come from a young body, you came from an old body. Let's say that if you lived a, a ripe life in your previous life. So if your previous life you died at 80, when you come back, your mind should be even slower because now you're 81. And then add another 80 years to that. If you live that long, then you're 160. Then add another 81 and so on. So therefore, when you come back as a child, you should be very old. You should think old, cannot adjust, even more rigid, even more narrow. Why? Because you're old. But in the mind training teachings, in Bodhisattva's, uh, 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 in uh, Shantideva's teachings, it says you actually know. Your body becomes old, and true, your faculties can slow down, but your mind doesn't slow down. Your mind and your faculties are related, but not one. I repeat, 
your mind and your faculties, eyes, ears, speech, smell, taste, and touch, the five aggregates. Listening, sound, uh, uh, hearing, smell, eye, sight, taste, and touch are called the five aggregates. The five aggregates are related to you, but they're not a part of you. Why? Because mind can exist without body. Mind can function without body. Mind can travel without body. Mind can move things or learn or see without body. Hence, the body is like a hotel room, just like what you're renting now in Kale. If your hotel room is wonderful, you can do more. If there's no electricity, no fax, no email, no internet, no Wi-Fi, well, you're back to writing postcards. <laughs> so if your hotel is not good, it doesn't reflect you. It's your hotel. Similar, similarly, if your body is not wonderful, it doesn't reflect your mind. Because your mind and your body are connected and they have a temporary relationship, but they are not one. So therefore, when we tell people, I'm too old to change, I can't change. I'm too set in my ways. Wrong view. Wrong attitude. Wrong thinking. That's why when you go to the monasteries where I come from, 3,000 monks, out of 3,000 monks, easily eight to 900 are very elderly and senior. 70s, 80s, 90s. You never meet one old monk that says to you, I'm depressed. I'm unhappy. I want to kill myself. Can I have another cigarette? <laughs> can I have another um, uh, uh, shoot up? I need another heroin dose. I'm, I'm, can I have some Xanax? Okay, one. <laughs> I, I used to take Xanax because I can't sleep, but no, not the other month. You know, can I have a Xanax? I'm, I'm sad. Uh, can we go out and have a drink? Any whiskey? None. And this is not a show they put on when you visit. I live there. A part of me is Tibetan Lama. A part of me is American. The American in me says, prove it to me. And it's, it's a horrible attitude at times. Prove it to me. And they proved it to me. I think all they all sorry, I believe in everything. I went there saying, well, I believe, but let me check it out. i would never met an old monk that needed drugs, alcohol, women, that needed smoke, that needed anything to be happy. I've never met an old senior monk that said to me, Oh God, I'm too old to practice. I'm too old to change. I'm too old to think more. Never. Even when His Holiness the Dalai Lama comes to the monasteries to give teachings, 80, 85 year old monks will slowly walk their way to the teaching hall, prostrate and sit reverently and receive teachings and think and say, Oh, I can apply that to my life. Why? Because the attitude is, I can take this with me to my next lives. My mind goes with me. So whatever you learn from your mind, it's not for this life. Which is, which is what makes practicing Dharma, makes a person very happy. Because whatever you're doing accumulates into future lives. It's a long-term investment. Whereas in the secular world, when we believe only in money, when we believe only in material things, when we believe in investments, and we only believe in position and name and power, perhaps, and not necessarily, not necessarily believe in those things in a negative way, but just we're taught to believe that, the American dream or whatever, the materialistic dream, that we accumulate. And over time, as we accumulate our position, our status, our name, our wealth, our investments, our children, our friends, clothes, collector's items, we become more unhappy. Why? Because we know that whatever we are accumulating will have to be let go of very soon. And it's a dichotomy because on the one hand, in the past when we were in our 20s and 30s, when we accumulated, we felt kind of happy because it's security. But when we reach our 40s and 50s and 60s, we kind of say, what's the big deal? No, really, what is the big deal if I have it or don't have it? This is not the sum of who I am, and this doesn't make me happy. This is a, it actually doesn't give me security. And for people who have been blessed to have their fortunes lost and go down, be cheated and lied to, blessed, they realize how these things don't bring happiness. They realize how these things don't bring happiness. Do you know why? 
We all need a roof over our heads. We all need security and money. But if we focus only on that, we're not happy. So what am I saying? <laughs> Give up everything, go live in the jungle with me? No. <laughs> That's not literally go live in the jungle with me. No. In fact, I just came out from the jungle today. <gasps> no. But a middle way. A middle way. That we work and support and take care of our commitment. But at the same time, we should work, take part of our time to work to our higher commitment, ourselves, our mind, our spirituality, our future lives, our death. I guarantee you, if you, if we, you doesn't mean you, if we, you, continue to only accumulate, acquire, you will see you become more depressed, more unhappy, more sad. That is why the top seven countries in the world, G7, the wealthiest countries in the world, have the biggest cases of depression, suicide, murder, crime, and crime that's not so straightforward, just, just hit you and take your bag. I mean, they tie you up, they peel your skin off. You know, they lock you up, they torture you, they dismember you, they eat you. You know, I mean, in these G7 countries, Japan, Germany, all that, the crimes are not straightforward. It's really twisted crimes that are really, you can't even imagine. It's not a matter of just robbing the little old lady. It's, a, it's, it's robbing her, taking her things, torturing her, and eating her. Why does that arise? Obviously, wealth doesn't satisfy them. They're bored. Materialism doesn't satisfy them. They're bored. Does this happen in countries that are not developed? Yes, it does. Maybe even unreported, but not as much. Because people are too busy trying to feed their stomachs. They're not interested in dismembering you and torturing you. They don't have time because if they don't, they don't have time, really. They have to go out there and take care of their fields or else there's no rice. They had no time to catch you, torture you. They want to catch you, they'll kill you. They just kill you on the spot. They got their satisfaction. They got their thrill. All right. I mean, I mean, both ways is not good. Samsara, samsara. My point, if we only think acquisitions and acquiring things, there's two facets of our mind. The mind that's conscious, the mind that's subconscious. The conscious part of our mind says, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's what I'm supposed to do. That's what I'm told. That's what it shows on, in the movies. You know, that's, that's what I'm taught in school and, and society and culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the more, get more prestige, more name, more money. Yeah, yeah. I'll be happy. I'll be happy. Happy, happy. Well then, uh, no pun intended, but every movie star should be very happy. But they have the highest cases of suicide. Drug use, abuse, alcoholism. And with the deepest respect to them, why? Because they've acquired everything and it doesn't bring them what they thought. It's not they're bad people. No, there are bad people who are actors. There are very nice people who are actors. It's not across the board. No. So a lot of them, you don't even know there's something wrong with them and you find them dead. OD. Why? They've gotten everything we're told you should have. Name, fame, money, prestige, popularity. And there's nothing wrong with those, except no one told them that it doesn't make them happy. So they go, oh, um, but I'm supposed to be happy now. You ever see people take pictures of stars? You ever see a star like, no, they all got, I mean, they're in the back doing drugs. Right? They're back killing people, raping people. They're in the back, you know, drinking up and they're drunk as a skunk and they come out. I'm real happy. <laughs> and I want to do another, you know, movie, a concert. Is it because they're bad? No. They suffer what everybody else suffers, except they're in the limelight. Others are not. They're just highlighted. They're not different than anyone else and anyone else is not different than them. Big businessmen, same thing. When they go for corporate meetings, they have to be very happy. Do you know how many big businessmen I've met when I close the doors, they cry? Do you know why they cry? Not because they're, 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 they're wimps. Because they have nowhere. They found a place where they're safe to express how they're really feeling. Oh yes. I've met thousands of people, literally. My point? We need to find a middle way. We need to do our jobs. We need to acquire, but we need to also shift our focus away 
What's the focus? What's the shift? The shift is acquire for a different reason. Is what we talked about two weeks ago. Acquire and do for a different reason. So someone like you wishes to continue your career, by all means do, but shift the purpose. When the purpose is shifted, you will see some glimmer of happiness. You will see the glimmer of happiness. Why? Just like Allison throwing the cup of water at me, a little scenario, of course she won't. We just change our perspective. And that is what the mind training teachings are all about. The mind training teachings are specifically that. They call in Tibetan, Lo Zhong. Lo is mind. Zhong or is to change. Lo Zhong is to transform and change our mind. It is not to assume our mind is bad. It is to assume our mind is deluded and ignorant. Deluded and ignorant is not a negative state of mind. It is a factual state of mind. When you say to someone you're ignorant, you're not saying you're stupid. When you're saying to someone you're deluded, you're not saying to them you're bad. You're saying really you don't know. If you've been raised in places where they say a hey, killing is wonderful and you kill, that's deluded. That's delusion. How can killing people be wonderful? How can creating pain be wonderful? If you've been raised on the streets and you've been taught stealing, Robbing people as a way of living is wonderful. That's the way, you know, society owes us. We had a bum rap. You know, our, you know, our parents have abandoned us. We're, we're orphans. We, we've been on the streets. You know, we get beaten up. We've been raped. We've been, we've been, uh, you know, hurt. We've been used. So it's our right to take back what we deserve. So we just beat people up and we rob people for. It. And we, if we believe that, that's delusion. Because hurting others never brings happiness. Never. It is against any wisdom, both religious and secular. It is against any, any natural cause in effect in our universe. Cause creating effect that harming others brings happiness. Against all. Therefore, the mind training teachings are specifically that to train our minds to change our perspectives. And when we change our perspectives, the whole world changes. Anger becomes less. More patience. More acceptance. Our motivation changes. Our goal changes. A whole new world opens up. A whole new world that's bigger and better and more illuminated. Why is it more illuminated? Because when we have less anger and less selfishness, it's always a better place to live. It's always a better place to be. It's always a better state of mind to be.